Social Energy is a complex series of interlocking systems, together governed by the Department of Social Energy. The Moderator Core makes sure that people follow it in both the real and Quantronic worlds. It is a semiotic and dynamic entity that combines a number of features into a seamless whole. One part is an identification and social currency system that lets people trade based on how much others like and trust them. One's value is based on social contributions, especially through DSE-sponsored programs, as well as physical proximity to Bakunin and resource utilization. The better you use what you have, the more you're worth. The second feature is as a debate forum, a place where people can talk and vote about their problems and how to solve them. A mixture of direct democracy and social media service. The last part is layers of augmented reality, a patina that projects the first two into the ship itself. It is the collective unconscious of Bakunin, using semiotic constructivism to express a new form of reality. It measures everything, functioning as a citizen's surveillance network that makes the first two parts possible. So, I'm sure you understand. I can see it in your eyes. I absolutely get it as well. But just in case, you know, anyone else is confused, uh, this video is all about social energy and Bakunin. Social energy did not arise randomly. Its systems were created by people, and it was designed with care. It would eventually become an interlocking reputation system, and it dates back to the equilibrium phase of Bakunin, as described in another video. Suffice to say, the Pandemos module was behind its conception and construction. This was the Moderated Discourse Project, a bold attempt to soften discourse in the aftermath of a violent series of riots. Its development and integration benefited greatly from the arrival of the Observance. See, the Sisters of the Knife created Arachne, a dark web used to share information across the motherships. Social energy was designed in tandem with Arachne, and it uses it even when outside of Bakunin. There are ongoing debates as to whether or not social energy could actually function without Arachne. There's also a debate as to whether it functions at all. Everyone on Bakunin participates, but adoption is more limited on the other motherships. Outsiders have mixed opinions on it. Those who are terminally online also probably hate it. Or love it. It's hard to tell. So, let's walk through social energy as if you were using it for the first time. You're on Bakunin. You ask your Geist, that is, your personal assistant, Hey, how am I doing? And your Geist starts churning, roiling. Its digital head spins. Social energy ratings are hopelessly complex. It's made up of a crazy number of rankings, trends, purchase records, qualitative reviews, and quantitative factors, all of which have indicators that go far beyond numbers. We're talking emojis. This massive dump of data is interpreted by your Geist, and it gives you a vague number as a response. If you're from Pan-Oceania, Yu Jing, a noted criminal or affiliated with Aleph, you start out despised, mistrusted, or at best seen as difficult and unproductive. If you're a representative of a corporation, O12, a smaller company, or a mercenary, you get a little more respect. Odds are, they won't have a strong opinion on you at the start. If you're from Ariadna, Hak Islam, or one of the other motherships, you're not inherently trustworthy, but you're not going to be seen as a threat. You might even be seen as insightful or valuable. If you're from Bakunin, you'll have probably grown up with the system, and who knows, there's a chance they even like you. For now. So, in response to your question, your Geist might give you an answer that's qualitative, like you're doing good, or you're hot shit, or you're trending, or you're trending, said with the stern sobriety that belies a terrifying near future. You might also get a number. The Social Energy Ranking System Logarithmic Yardstick, created by the Department of Social Energy, uh, that is your SRSLY, your SIRSLY. Well, your SIRSLY in theory goes between 1 and 10,000, although almost everyone is between 2,000 and 8,000. That number can change, but rarely more than three digits at a time. You could, in theory, be below zero. If you're from Equinox, or you're an Aleph agent with a history of violence, you start up below zero. Also, no matter how high you go, everyone inevitably comes down. People might get tired of your takes, or you might do something annoying. Or maybe you just can't keep up with the meme wars and discourse. So, you fall. But you'll go back up, I wouldn't stress. Uh, but maybe you do stress. Maybe your rating is very low. Maybe you're seen as a griefer. This leads to security measures, where maybe you want to get away from your old name. You might try to get around this by having a fake ID. Well, that's fine, and nobody actually cares if your personal info is fake. Do it! Bakunin loves it when you use a different name or persona. However, if you try to benefit from false credentials, there's suddenly a problem. Let's say you try to buy something. Everyone can see that your social energy rank is fraudulent and now that ID is burned. People have spent many years trying to hack the social energy system. In the early years, the repercussions were very grave. 
but eventually it became a rite of passage to attempt to hack social energy in DSE-sponsored challenges, with serious rewards for any white hat hackers who find flaws in the energy. Besides, more elite hackers are going to spend their energy elsewhere, hacking bank systems and military infrastructure instead of the DSE. Attempts to subvert the system are seen as criminal acts. That's where the Bakunin social defense systems come in. BSDS was originally set up to identify fake social energy IDs in order to protect nomad businesses from outsiders who were attempting to rip them off through the social energy platform. Like I said, the use of a fake ID or concealment of identity is not frowned on, but Kunian authorities are less keen on such activities impacting nomad commerce and companies. The founder of BSDS is Sabine Hunkar. She was originally tasked with recruiting just three coding engineers to set up the required soft security protocols to protect social energy. And in a very short time, those in charge of Bakunin realized how powerful the security measures were and formed the BSDS as a separate entity, sort of a state-associated business, based out of Bakunin's upper levels. Today, Sabine runs a 42-strong team of software engineers and Quantronic programmers, offering security solutions far beyond social energy and the nomad motherships. In fact, BSDS algorithms protect financial transactions in Maya and Arachne, as well as advanced security and firewall solutions for Dawn's financial sector in Ariadna, though the products are repackaged by a cell company to avoid the impression of a nomad crip on the human sphere's finances. So, let's say that you think you've got a way around Sabine and all the other social energy security. Everyone always thinks they know how to game the reputation system. Sometimes it's foreign actors, sometimes it's locals, but for foreigners, it's common to end up getting them hooked and humiliated in a process known as phishing. You know, like phishing. With like a PH. Countless would-be saboteurs have been hooked by an enigmatic actor known as the Fisher King. Nobody knows who he is. An AI? A collective group? A disabled veteran? A Sin Eater? <laughs> Maybe it's me. Either way, the Fisher King has an uncanny knack for leading any serious disruptors on long, winding roads that lead nowhere. Rumors do suggest that it's easy to game the system, usually with a small group engaging in endless positive interactions to create positive social energy reputations. Well, it doesn't work. These are circle evals, and these circle evals are insufficient to trick the watchful algorithms. And besides, basically everyone's tried it already. Duplicate evaluations aren't relevant. Attempting to flood the system with shallow, positive impressions makes the system think, at best, you've got some weird hyperfocus, and at worst, that you're a spammer to be dealt with. Still, enough small interactions can build up. If you're nice to people, their geists will auto-flag your interactions as positive, and your rep will go up. High-ranked individuals do have their evals count for more, but it's such a small amount that it's really more a token of pride than a real factor. So if you want to up your rank, you need big numbers. You need to do things that other people like, and you need to do them consistently. That could be being supportive, being nice, being interesting, being flamboyant in unique ways, being an asshole in funny ways, being personally responsible, being generous. The list goes on forever, and it's almost all cataloged by geists in countless micro-interactions that add up over time. So yeah, you need big numbers if you want to make a splash, which ties in well with its other use, voting. Bakunin's head of state is the conciliator. They implement societal referendums which are resolved via social energy. There are a lot of different societies within Bakunin. There are matrilineal micro-monarchies, leftist communes, neo-pagans, and procedurally generated demarchies, and also everything in between. The conciliator doesn't worry about that. The ideas are coming too fast. Social energy provides a forum for discussing ideas, and also civically engaging with other communes. Each commune governs itself, and chosen representatives go to the conciliator as needed. Most of the time, it ends up being one module, one vote. The result is that there is not much bureaucracy to track legislation. Social energy creates the processes and executes them at the same time. It generates bills, tabulates votes, and it's just up the conciliator to implement them. If you have a problem, you discuss it. You post memes, you write things on the walls, you talk to other people about it, online or in person. You're also part of a module, unless you're a visitor. Even if you don't live on Bakunin, you can still have a strong opinion and influence others but the power of your voice is also tied to your physical space. If you want to make changes to the vaudeville neighborhood, your opinion counts for much more if you live there or spend a lot of time there. If you need an authority and can't just publicly discuss it, you talk to moderators or your commune's leadership. There really isn't that much bureaucracy or state-based authority. Therefore, 
The conciliator's main job is resolving disputes between modules and keeping Bakunin moving. When decisive action is required, a quick survey of the prevailing social order can produce a ready-made consensus. It's all vibes, very little data, but, but like I said, Bakunians seem to like it. If those first two features are based around socialization and voting, the third is as currency. Bakunin started out with lots of little sub-economies, based on favors and money and markets and more. With social energy though, all of them are united. Social energy is a heavily encrypted system that tracks reputation and contributions, and unlike other systems, it worked. It had money and effort and buy-in. The system is actually perfect as a self-regulating line of credit within the IOTA scarcity economy. This is codified as SEC, or Social Energy Credit. In the abstract, it means combining the purchasing power of many to allow people to anonymously buy beyond their means. It keeps money inside the nomad economy. Users access funds provided automatically by other users whose funds are not currently tied up in other areas. The Nomad SECC, or Social Energy Credit Corporation, exists to govern and protect this process, and under their watchful eye, the system is exploited very rarely and ties the Nomad community together in pro-social ways. Non-Nomads can also invest in SEC as a form of cryptocurrency, providing their own capital and adding to the SEC. Not many have done so, though. SEC is used anywhere Nomads do business, but its use in community have been slow to expand lest it become more volatile. It's stable for nomads, who can very easily contribute their own earnings and productivity and use their reputation for exchanges. But if you're not a nomad, your chance to gain reputation is far, far more limited, and investors are going to be skeptical. How much money do you really want tied up in Bakunin's opinion of you? But for most people, if you, for example, wanted to use it, it's simple. Any small purchase is logged, and your behavior is tabulated by the mesh network of every other participant in social energy. You want that battery? <laughs> it's yours. Give it to a friend if you want. Everyone will win. But let's say you want a Starship battery. Some big fusion capacitor designed for a freighter. Let's say you need a hundred of them. The guy who'd normally give you one uh, gets a warning. A big ol' red flag saying, hey, this is very risky. He gets a note informing him that he should really look into your history to see if you will actually contribute to the social energy with a hundred fusion batteries. He's warned that if he gives them to you, and you screw something up, you'll both be in deep social debt. And then he gives them to you anyway, because the system is about maximizing autonomy and letting people make their own mistakes. So, uh, what would uh, you do with 100 fusion batteries, huh? I'd like to give them to friends, and I'd say, here you go, it's a good one. And then they'd say, huh, yeah, yeah, sure, thanks for the battery, I love it. And I'd say, prove it, I want to watch. I want to see you put it in your big gas guzzler of a ship. Finally, the most visible aspect of social energy is the vibrant graffiti in ever-changing Quantronic layers on Bakunin. It's a neon turf war, an ongoing substrata, a splatoon, a jet grind radio. But there are layers to that discussion. The Quantronic reality that a tourist interacts with is not the same one that a Bakunian native sees. A native gets a richer, deeper meaning than a visitor, and I also mean that in a very literal way. The top layer is the starter area, also called the newbie zone, or general chat, or the promenade. In the old days, it was a freaking unmitigated assault on the senses. Disturbing and disruptive imagery, well, well that was just what you saw. The core, uh, that is the shared areas of Bakunin, was unpleasant and inhospitable for outsiders, and not really fun for locals either. Considering that Bakunin was also trying to grow its tourism industry, it made sense to forcibly move all of that one level lower. This held appeal for pretty much everyone involved, and the result is that this top layer, the promenade, is a mischievous, impish, and comfortable space. You walk around some halls of Bakunin, and you see similar comfortable environments. It's not sterile or anything, but, you know, it's still unusual. But any Bakunin could chat with others, you know, spray some meme tags, share some ideas. Basically, it's comfortable, but it doesn't drive off visitors. In fact, because this layer is so public-facing, it's common to fill it with augmented reality environments that are unique, pleasing, and artistic. Anyone visiting the Nomad motherships gets a taste of what lies below, and every hall is basically a public art piece. It's very common to see Bakunian citizens just sitting down, staring at art, like sculptures or parks. They're probably deep diving into lower layers, the next one being the Labyrinth. Below the promenade is Jareth's Labyrinths, which is a reference to David Bowie in the movie Labyrinth. 
I've seen that movie. I think it's good. I think that visitors will find it confusing and off-putting, the way that navigating an old forum can be a weird experience, or poking around an idiosyncratic Discord server. There are fences, and logic gates, and digital firewalls, and metaphorical Quantronic airlocks, because they don't want anyone getting in by mistake. There's no moderation here. This is the wild frontier of social energy. It's raw. People don't share sanitized memes, they share their soul. They explain their psychoses and traumas and ideas and their hottest takes. People don't really come to any conclusions, but they get to share a feeling, and there's value in that honesty. Below that lies the undercurrent. It is purposefully obscured, and getting there requires serious effort. You have to be in the right physical location on Bakunin. Then you have to pass some bizarre, often changing test. A riddle, or a mathematical puzzle, or a test of one's hacking skills, or even just an outright denial to all but the highest Sursley ranks. The undercurrent is like an old American speakeasy, available to just the biggest nerds or the most influential. So it's in there. Depends on who you ask. There are rumors that this is where the Black Hand meets, or where the biggest influencers determine the future of the Nomad Nation. Uh, sometimes people go there just to look for genuine constructive criticism, free of the noise found in the outer layers. But also like, come on, it's not that important. It's not that influential. It's just exclusive. And getting there proves that you're adept at using social energy systems, and that you're willing to go out of your way to do so. So, social energy is a lot of things, but most of all, it's a vibe. It's the feeling that while on Bakunin, you're buying things, looking at things, and dealing with things differently. You're moving through real life as if you were in a Quantronic space, and vice versa. And because Bakunians are a bunch of sickos, they like it. This is the end of the video. I said I'd do it, so I did it. And uh, it was fun, probably only fun for like 200 people, but I'd do it again for you! Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe or whatever.